Before we can talk about the swing itself, we need to define a few terms. The extended arm consists of the front upper arm, the front forearm, and the bat. EAA, or extended arm alignment, is the point at which the extended arm comes into complete alignment like this. Launch position is the point in your swing when your front foot touches the ground. Your launch position should look something like this. Explosion point is the last point in your swing where the bat is still accelerating. It is the point at which you should make contact with the ball. This is the position you should be in at the explosion point. Notice how my arm has come into complete alignment and the bat is above the plane of the arm, but I have not reached EAA yet. Contact point is the point at which you actually make contact with the ball. Let's take a look at the swing from an overhead view. At launch, your bat should be back as far as possible. Your bat accelerates all the way through the explosion point until it reaches EAA. Then the wrists roll over as the bat starts to slow down. When you step into the box, you want to hit the ball as hard as possible. It doesn't matter if you're swinging for the fence or just hitting the ball through the hole. The harder you hit the ball, the better your chances of getting on base. So what does it take to hit the ball harder? We will get into the mechanics of it in a moment, but first let's talk about bat speed. There are two separate schools of thought on bat speed and how to efficiently create it. They are rotational and linear. Those who teach rotational bat speed say that bat speed comes from the force created by rotating on an axis, your spine. These people believe that the baseball and the slow pitch softball swing are one and the same. I teach linear to rotational bat speed. I contend that baseball and softball swings are completely different. In baseball, you're using the first part of the swing to identify the pitch and adjust to pitch speed and movement. Rotational mechanics work well for baseball, but in softball, you don't have to worry about catching up to a 95 mile an hour fastball or staying on a 70 mile an hour curve. Instead, you can use the first part of your swing to build power. Remember, in baseball, the emphasis is on quick, fast movements, and in slow pitch, the emphasis is on strong, powerful ones. Also, in slow pitch, you supply all the power, so you need to generate as much power as you can in your swing. The best way to do this is to use your swing to build linear force. As for bat acceleration, I have been asked numerous times if I use my hands to apply opposite forces to the bat handle, pushing the bat head toward the pitcher with my top hand and pushing the handle towards the catcher with my bottom hand. The answer is no. Doing this is like using a four-way lug wrench on a tire. It works well on a tire iron, but it's an inefficient way to rotate the bat. So how do you convert the linear force in your swing into swing rotation? When your front arm extends, the bat has nowhere to go except to rotate around the front wrist. I talk a lot about cost in terms of the energy cost of different parts of the swing. During the course of a swing, you can only fire each muscle one time, which means that there is a limited amount of energy that you can put into the swing. You want to get the most bat speed you can out of that limited energy supply. So it seems silly to me to apply the tire iron technique to rotate the bat since its cost is high. Instead, you can let the front wrist do the job for free. Since we have settled on creating linear force with our swing, let's look at the best way to do that. I don't worry too much about the peripheral parts of the swing, like where your back elbow is, where your hands start, whether you're open or closed. Find something you're comfortable with, try to stay tall in the box, and don't start with your feet too far apart, because that will take away from your stride and your leg drive. The things I'm really concerned with are your position at launch and your position at contact. At launch, your hips and shoulders should be turned in. Your hands should be reaching as far back as possible, and your front leg should be reaching as far forward as possible. This puts you in the best coiled position. From there, you're going to throw the bat at the ball, and at contact, you want to hit the ball well out in front. Let's take a closer look at what this does for you. If during my swing, I get my hands back to here, and I hit the ball here, I will have this much distance to build bat speed. This is called the acceleration arc. Now, if I take a swing and get my hands back to here, and hit the ball all the way out here, look at how much longer my acceleration arc is. I have a much greater distance in which I can build bat speed and linear force. This will allow me to hit the ball much harder. Now, my line drives will get through the holes much quicker, and my home runs will be a lot longer. The swing mechanics hitting style focuses on the concept of lengthening your acceleration arc. I want you to get your hands back as far as you can and hit the ball as far out in front of you as you can, while keeping good leg drive and good balance. Along with the grip, which we've already covered, this is the core of the swing mechanic swing. So from here on out, work to lengthen your acceleration arc.